Question two. Here it comes. How do we explain the apparently counterproductive behavior of seeking high-risk experiences, such as climbing Mount Everest or walking across Niagara Falls on a narrow tightrope, extended high above the cascading falls? These acts obviously do not enhance human survival or reproduction. So, the, there are two uh, answers to this question. The first is that there is an instinct that's involved in those sorts of behaviors, and that's the instinct I spoke most, most about in um, this week's lessons uh, when I spoke about intentionality. Uh, I'm referring to the seeking instinct, the seeking instinct as Panksepp calls it, um, Berridge calls it the wanting instinct, um, Rawls and others call it the brain reward system and so on, it goes by different names. This is the dopaminergic mesocortical mesolimbic um, uh, circuit. Uh, as I said, different people have different names for it. There are different th theoretical disagreements about exactly what its function is, uh, but we all agree that it exists. And one thing that it certainly does is it, is it um, facilitates risk-taking behavior, um, seeking novelty, uh, 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 it's a foraging instinct. That's the, probably uh, one of the best words for it. You know, the animal just searching, just seeking, just looking around curiously, interestedly, uh, trying to find a good time. And um, the intrinsic to that system is looking for new things, looking for novelty, looking for something unexpected. Um, overactivation of that system leads to risk-taking behavior. But... The second thing that I wanted to say in response to this question is we must remember although these basic instinctual systems certainly do exist in the brain and certainly do explain a lot of what we and other animals do, um, there's a lot more to the mind than merely instinct. These are the foundations of the mind, but we don't want to reduce all of the complexity of human behavior and human mental life or indeed animal mental life uh, uh, only to instincts. So to uh, illustrate the point I'm making, um, the examples of this kind of risk-taking behavior like, like um, tightrope walking over the Niagara uh, Falls, uh, it can be what we call counterphobic behavior, precisely because it's scary, which incidentally refers to another instinct, the fear instinct, precisely because you have an instinctual response which frightens you, which makes you want to avoid it, the higher cognitive apparatus might develop in such a way as to try to overcome fear. And so risk-taking behavior might be a response to fear, an attempt to master fear, to prove to yourself and to anyone else who's listening that, you know, I'm brave, I'm tough, I'm scared, nothing frightens me. At that level, we're no longer talking about simple, pure, instinctual behavior. We're talking about the, the complex, higher elaborations of instinct. And it's really important that we always remember this, the human mind in particular, uh, it does very complicated gymnastics with our instincts. And uh, we, we must always be on our guard against um, this kind of reductive uh, sociobiology.